In a world that is full of change, so much darkness and uncertainty, it can be hard to not be swept away by it. But in times like these, I try to remember that even in the darkest and coldest days of winter, when signs of life seem to have disappeared and light feels so absent, it is still there. Underneath the blanket of snow and ice, deep within the earth, life is sleeping, regaining its energy and preparing for the next season. Just like the seasons, the phases of life within us have their place, serve their purpose, and remind us that everything is in constant motion, whether it feels like it or not. Even the darkest of days will eventually pass. As the summer season comes to an end, I can't help but feel a little sad, like a mother whose child has grown up and is ready to leave the nest. I feel like I had waited for months for the spring season to arrive, and then to see all of my new seedlings grow into a beautiful and abundant harvest. There were certainly challenges along the way, long stretches of hot and humid heat with little to no rain. But that's the thing about gardening. It keeps you on your toes. You have to keep an open mind and understand that it's not going to be perfect and that there will always be things out of your control. You have to learn how to let go of expectations and instead embrace the ebb and flow of nature. Work with it and learn from it. I have learned so much these past few months, and I've been taking notes of what I plan to do differently next year, what worked and what didn't work, and what I want to add to the garden next year. I'll share all of that in another video, but in the meantime, I've spent the last couple weeks harvesting and getting creative with how I preserve or use that harvest. I've still been taking some online courses on herbalism. So it's been fun practicing what I've been learning. Down the paths of your indifference To the heart of my despair There's a sudden jolt of memory Of the day you used to care There's no substance to the day Now solid flesh turned to all I have is my nostalgia for when I held you near. Do you ever think of me? Do you ever think of me? When I thought I found my feet, but I just slipped away. I just slipped away, slipped down in these empty streets. I've been letting some of my plants flower and go to seed so that the bees can enjoy them and so that I can save those seeds for future gardening. What is that? This is catnip. So I am actually, oh, this has gone to seed, so I'm actually going to save the seeds. So I'm going to dry this out inside, hang them up to dry. The bee is a little upset because I just pulled from its little, the bees love this. They love the catnip as it's flowering, but I left some flowers here for them to enjoy. This is a catnip plant? This is catnip, yes. And so now it's, you know, reached its full potential and it's starting to flower and go to seed. And so I'm going to save uh, the seeds and dry this out inside. So I've already harvested some of it for our use. Um, so this is uh, what's kind of left over that I just let go to flower and go to seed so that the uh, bees could enjoy it and then also harvest some for next year using the seeds. Or I mean, grow some next year using the seeds. So this is what I will be doing today is hanging this up.
Some of the plants in the garden have given all the life they possibly could during their time this season. So it was time to clean some stuff out and rotate in the new. actually planting some beds right now of some cold hardy greens so that we can continue to grow, extend our grow season through the seasons as well as into a good majority of winter because I'll be covering these with some poly when the weather starts to change. things like kale in here, some collard greens, some chard, even some spinach. I'll be doing a few beds like this over in this area. Because fall can be a great time to plant perennials, I decided to add a few more things to my cottage garden by the house. Coneflowers and black-eyed Susans are native to my area, so I planted those, as well as hibiscus. Because it had been so dry, it was a little hard to dig those holes, but I managed to get them in the ground okay. Earlier this year, I totally missed the mark on buying fruit trees for my garden. When I started looking, everything was already sold out. I had no idea that you have to jump on those very quickly 
especially for the organic, non-GMO varieties that I look for. I've been on an email list for a regional farm who specializes in organic fruit trees and berry bushes, so that I won't miss out again this year. They just notified me that they had pawpaws in stock. I had never heard of pawpaws before and had never seen the fruit in stores or at farmer's markets, but apparently it's a native fruit tree to the United States. But because pawpaws are such a fragile fruit, bruise easily and don't store well, they don't make good commercial fruits, which is why you typically don't see them in stores. The tropical fruit is a cross between a banana and mango. I had no right to love you when you belonged to someone else. And maybe it was wrong to think of you as a symbol of love itself. But you captured my soul, my life became whole as you took your place by my side. And now it seems so right to love you. And my love can't be denied Yes, it seems so right to love you And my love can't be denied Sometimes love is too hard to find And too easy for us to lose and we often are completely blind To the faults of the one we choose We get some lucky breaks We make bad mistakes As life continues to pass us by But no matter how often we fail at love We still continue to try Yes, no matter how often we fail at love, we still continue to try. I had no right to invade your life, no right to lead you on. And the guilt cut deeply as a night, not clear how to respond. But we believe that love can conquer all its magic Can I fail? Our souls can climb the highest wall If we allow love to breathe Now, I wait and put mesh over this so that we can keep the light out because they are very sensitive to UV light for the first three years of their lives. So this will all be covered by mesh, 40% uh, shade cloth. And uh, that is going to be arriving tomorrow. Unfortunately, I could not find it anywhere locally, so I had to order it. And um, as soon as that comes in, we'll be covering these. But right now, luckily they're under some canopy trees, so that should also help. But I'm going to put uh, some um, sheet at least like over it so that way they can still get some proper airflow in the meantime until that arrives tomorrow but I think that the pawpaws are gonna do just fine here I wanted to make sure that these trees and everything else I planted got off on the right start so I made some organic Korean fertilizer also known as JMS or Jadam microbial solution this recipe comes from years of regenerative farming methods and took years to develop. It's effective and hopefully will replace all the other non-organic methods that are currently being used and are toxic to our health and environment. The fertilizer is insanely cheap and easy to make using only a few ingredients.
so I am in the greenhouse right now where I've been keeping this microbial solution, uh, letting it set in some warmth and heat. Um, and it's been sitting for probably at least 48 hours, if not a little bit more than that. Uh, so I'm getting ready to take off the bag, the top, and see what's inside and also mix it um, with some water because this solution you can't just use on the plants by itself. It's too strong. So uh, you have to dilute it with some water. And the ratio for diluting is about one to 20, which for about a gallon, um, I have a, some gallon jugs here. I'll be using about um, three fourth cup of the solution and mixing it with about a gallon of water. And when you use water, you really wanna make sure that you're using a soft water, uh, like rainwater or also distilled. You can see in here, um, it really has bubbled up and that's really what you want. Um, it means it's live, it's active. So you can see the bubbles here. And uh, this is really gonna make a really nice mixture, a nice solution for fertilizing the plants. As summer winds down and I prepare for fall, even though I feel a bit sad to see the season come to an end, I also feel a sense of satisfaction and pride of everything I set out to do from the very beginning when we first stepped foot onto our new homestead. It's hard to believe that just a year ago, it was only a cottage house on a small hill in the woods, but that we turned it into a beautiful and functional garden and homestead. I can't wait to see how it continues to evolve with our care and love, and it only gives me hope for brighter days ahead. <laughs>